Well, hello and welcome to Perkins Engineering YouTube channel. This is a special episode, number 50, and uh, we're really delighted to have Dad with us today. And uh, we're talking about the 93 car and the fact that this year is the 30th anniversary. We've had this car on the racetrack, it's been restored. What do you think of all that? Well, it certainly uh, gets the old memory uh, going back. and. Uh, 93 was a tremendous good year for, for me. It was my first uh, win for Perkins Engineering on my own without uh, the Holden deal, the team. And it was a convincing win. And uh, the fact that you now got the car absolutely as we had it, it it's, it's fantastic, Jack. You've done a good job. The fact that this car is, it's kind of like the Jack Brabham Formula One car. It was built by yourself and your business. The engine was built in, in Australia. Australian made was kind of what Perkins Engineering was all about. Well, that's true, and uh, there was uh, controversy even then because uh, the Holden were trying to make the Chev engine be the dominant engine, and uh, I weren't, weren't going to have anything to do with that. And uh, so, uh, with the help of the general, uh, the managing director of Holden, who let me make special heads and uh, blocks. Uh, we, we made a rocket ship and uh, it really upset the uh, camp there for a bit. And, uh, but to have the last Holden uh, engine in, in this Holden, the last full complete Holden, and have that pole position and win Bathurst, they're uh, pretty, pretty good memories. That's what a lot of people won't understand is every Holden that won Bathurst since this car in 93 actually had a Chevy engine. So that's what makes this car quite special. It's the last Holden engine, the manufactured engines in Australia to win Bathurst. So it's a very special car. Do you remember much about the race week, the weekend, the race? What's the memories? Well, I remember, yeah, we weren't as big as team as we ended up. And uh, I remember I did the cylinder heads on this. Uh, you know, I, I'm on the tools. Uh, I, I was on the tools a lot back then. And uh, I did the cylinder heads and uh, uh, because we had a lot of metal to remove where we'd added metal and so on. and. Uh, but the getting, uh, I do remember very clearly uh, once we got to the very first practice session up there at Bathurst, I, I'd only done a couple of laps and the times were fantastic. I know I come in and I said to the guys, mate, this has got some bloody mumbo and it's going gonna, it's gonna to do a very good time. And uh, it really went just everything uh, absolutely copybook from then on. And 1993 was the first year of these Castrol major sponsorship, these colours. Um, there's a funny story there, wasn't there supposed to be two Castrol cars? <laughs> yes, uh, it was earlier the, uh, in that year, quite a bit earlier, I got a call from Castrol at one stage and they said, hey, do you reckon you can run two cars uh, you know, at Bathurst this year for whatever the money was, I forget what the money was. And I, without even thinking, I said, yeah, of course we could run two cars uh, at Bathurst and Sandown. And, um, so time went on and I'm starting to scratch the old wallet thinking there's no way and uh, so I rang up the managing director of Castro and said look will you let me off the hook I can't run two cars at Bathurst I just haven't got enough money. He said I was wondering when I'd get that phone call and I also made a call to Holden who had frozen me out from sponsorships because I wouldn't run the Chev engine and I rang up the marketing director and I said listen uh, Rob uh, I really am hurting for money. Can, can you sort me out with a bit of money for Bathurst? Oh, he said, uh, how much do you want? And I said, I, I really need about 50 grand. He said, well, you'll get it, but don't tell anyone. And uh, so again, that's the relationship I had with Holden. It was sort of really good and really bad, but uh, the, the memories of it are fantastic. Um, now, Greg Hansford's role can't ever go unnoticed because he did a superb job. And I can resonate with Greg's role because now in supercars, I'm a part-time driver in a co-driving sense, but Greg was racing against Jim Richards and Mark Scaife, who were both full-timers in the same car. So that's a pretty impressive effort from Greg. Greg was fantastic. And uh, I obviously knew Greg, but, and, and he drove from Offutt at times. And, uh, but I followed him for about four or five hours or whatever it was in the Bathurst 12 hour I did. And uh, I was in the car and he was just ahead of me and I just kept following him. And I thought, this bloke is just driving so accurately. I said, uh, I said to myself, so right there and up at our 12 hour race, I said, hey, what are you doing next year for Bathurst? 
And he said, well, I sort of might have a deal with Moffat, but I'm not sure he hasn't come to me yet. So I said, well, don't. You're coming with me if that suits you. And uh, but Greg was a great bloke, and it wasn't all about, oh, how much are you going to pay me or any of that thing. He, he just wanted a good car. He wanted to be in a team where he felt comfortable. And, uh, yeah, we didn't have any egos between us. And, uh, yeah, it was a tremendous time to have, have run with Greg, and uh, his memories have been fantastic. Well, another part of what I was going to talk to you about is the race itself and that race start from pole position. The famous commentary line by Mike Raymond was... Perkins by the country mile. Speaking with Barry Abbottmeyer, who'd been with Perkins Engineering since day one in, in 1986, he tells me there was a, a special first gear made for that exact reason. Can you recall any of that? Yes, I do, because we had a 3.25 diff ratio. In other words, a very long diff and I think first gear would do about 95 kilometres an hour. Uh, the original, and I made a special one, or Hollinger made me a special first gear, much lower, uh, so I could get off the line properly. And uh, I know I bolted off the line, it was, and, and I had good faith in the machinery. I, 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 I know I dropped the clutch at 7,500 and it spun the wheels and got going, didn't bog down. Uh, but f further than that, I, I, with all the uh, belly who on the uh, pole position that before the race, I hadn't switched the fuel pumps on. And so I started the race and just got into the start of my second lap and the engine died. And I had a heart attack for a second till I realised straight away I didn't have the, the, uh, the fuel pump switched on, which was a pretty rookie error. But anyway, we uh, survived all that. But for those keen-eyed blokes who saw suddenly me 200-yard uh, metre gap dwindle, that was the reason. And... The race itself was a, a dogfight between the Gibson car of Scaife and, and Jim Richards and it was a pretty in, intense battle for the whole 161 laps. It was indeed and uh, I, I do recall that, um, you know, I, I, thought, I thought after practice we, you know, we were pretty okay but we had to keep the hammer down and uh, Greg did everything right in his stint, um, you know, I did everything right in my stint but the pressure was really on from... Uh, uh, Scafi and uh, Richo, but you know, uh, it, it's what racing's all about. We never used to run into each other or whatever, and uh, it, yeah, it was a really, really good competitive fight. And what was the sense of satisfaction to grab your first win with your own team? You'd had three with Brock at HDT, um, but to cross that chequered flag, talk us through those moments. Well, it's a feeling that, you know, you can only... Do, you, only I have that feeling, or, and Greg would have, but a, a tremendous satisfaction, tremendous pride that uh, I'd been able to get my own bunch of guys together and uh, a team. And, uh, you know, we, we did a tough as a privateer. We were a genuine privateer. And the, for those, again, keen-eyed guys, you'd see we wore our white jackets on the podium because we had different driving suits. I couldn't afford a driving suit for uh, uh, Greg, so to cover up his... Uh, old Moffat driving suit, we, we wore our white jackets, but th that feeling of getting the chequered flag, knowing you'd won it from the front, knowing you'd won it on sheer uh, preparation and speed, it was a fantastic feeling. And one last one um, before we have a quick chat about what's under the cover here. You're going to have a chance this year to drive this car at Bathurst, we're, you know, weather preventing, because we, we're not that keen to take it out in the wet. Are you excited at the thought of driving this car again at Bathurst 30 years on? Well, it, that does give me a, 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 good, a good feeling and having ran it uh, at last week or so at Calder, uh, I ran it on, and you ran it, we ran it on full throttle, it's a proper race car, it's not just a pretend one. Uh, so I'm itching to give it a go down, I mean I won't go on 10 tenths, I'll probably go 6 or 7 tenths, but I'll, I'll give it a good old fang up the hill and down the hill. So yeah, I am looking forward to that. Yeah, the one thing we haven't got in that car is the right diff ratio. It's got a diff ratio that's going to work at every track and hill climb or whatever in Australia, so it might run out of puff. But thanks for your time today, Dad. And, and another reason why I wanted to get you down here was because it's the 30th anniversary um, with my uh, own racing, we wanted to see how we could pay tribute to it. And thanks to Shoreham Partners, who have sponsored us this year in Super 2, we want to pull the covers off this one and, and show you what's under there. Sounds good, Jack, and thank you. Well, this is it. I think it's come up really good. And like I said, thanks to Shoreham Partners. 
Castro have got behind us as well and really celebrating this 30 years, and I reckon it looks great. I reckon it looks fantastic, Jack. Even though we've got Shore and Partners on the side and a few things, like that, it certainly looks like it's certainly a brother of that car, that's for sure. And I don't know how you kept the number there with all the silly rules that uh, are around, but <laughs> it's fantastic. Looks real good, Jack. Yeah, real good. Yeah, well, we keep our car number 70, but number 11's part of the livery, and supercars have given us approval for that. It, We've got some of the other original logos on the car as well. We've got the Seven Sport, Crane Cams, Dunlop, and it's cool to have the old retro Castrol logo on the car, on, on the bonnet, and I think it's come up a treat, so I'm really keen to get this car on track. Oh, it's really good. It looks real, really good, Jack. I, I cannot believe it. <laughs> Big thanks to Erebus as well. We've even done the white wheels, interrupted our sort of preparations to, to do all this, but it's big thanks to everyone that's supporting the program. and. It's a really cool thing to do, and we're going to have this at Sandown Bathurst, and I dare say it'll probably stay on for Adelaide at the end of the year. Good on you, Jack. Well done, mate. Really good.